you have to stand proudly for the national anthem. Well, you shouldn't be playing. You shouldn't be there. Maybe you shouldn't be in the country. I think it's had a huge impact on sports, a huge negative impact on sports. That politics remain separate. There is no doubt Donald Trump loves talking sports, even if his own messaging with Kaepernick's protests does not match reality. People don't want to see uh, all of the politics. They've got enough politics with me and with everybody else. And they don't want to see it with football and sports on Sunday or whenever they happen to be watching. Simply, it's the lack of consistency. Keep politics out of sports, he proclaims, but only when he says so. Allah, do as I say, not as I do. Here is a politician doing the chop when it's come under scrutiny. An intentional move. Of course, who can forget the direct infusion of politics into Dana White's ultimate fighting championship? People want to ask me all the time why I'm running. I'm sick and tired. I'm sick and tired of them want to teach CTR in, in school. This also goes for some of Donald Trump's endorsements, like Herschel Walker. I'm very proud to be endorsed by President Trump. I'm running to help him drain the swamp and build the wall. I'm Tommy Tuberville, and I approve this message because I won't back down. Alabama Senator and former football coach Tommy Tuberville. From the family farm to the New York Stock Exchange, from the Atlanta dream to the American dream. Former appointed Senator of Georgia Kelly Leffler and much more. Someone who knows this well is former ESPN host Dan Patrick. I met Donald Trump back in 1983, maybe. Doug Flutie had signed with the uh, New Jersey Generals. Okay. I went to Trump Tower uh, when Herschel Walker went to the Generals. Ah, uh, yes, the Generals. How did that play out? I've been in uh, Donald's office before to do an interview with him. Saw him when he was doing The Apprentice. When I was at Football Night in America, I saw him. Uh, he came up, said hello, introduced me to Mark Burnett and said that we should do a show together. And then he left, and I'm standing there with Mark Burnett, who I had no relationship with. And I just said, uh, hey, Mark. And he goes, hey, Dan. And I go, um, uh, that was awkward. He goes, it always is with Donald. Always is. And that was it. Not surprising in the slightest. On the apprentice front. He would often soil himself on the apprentice set. He's incontinent from all the speed. All the Adderall he does, the cocaine that he's done for decades, you know, all that stuff has a laxative and it has an effect on your on your bowels and his are uncontrollable. He's worn diapers since probably the 90s, but I saw it firsthand in the 2000s on Celebrity Apprentice in late 2000s and we'd have to uh, stop the show and and change him, you know, and that was Keith Schiller's job. He would take him off set, he would wipe him down. Our nickname for Keith was Wet Wipes. Comedian and former Trump worker Noel Kassler spilled the beans to Midas Touch. He'll also do it in a rage, and this is where it gets really drug-related. He'll start to freak out. You know, one time there was the word arbitrage on a cue card, and he started screaming that the, you know, the script department was setting him up. You're setting me up! And he just freaked out and then very loudly evacuated his bowels, and you could smell it. You know, and the guy who was holding the boom bike, Mike, you know, was tearing up. So when you hear Diaper Don, it's not a joke. He tries to hide it. I'll give you one more fact. If you look up the video of him when he was doing the WWF thing, he, he tackles a guy on the ground outside of the ring, and you can clearly see the outline of the Depends in his pants. And that was back in the early 90s. What I think is important is to remember this all fits a theme. He will sometimes grind his teeth. He doesn't know where to stand. He doesn't know how to communicate. He doesn't know how to act in front of other world leaders. So the Dan Patrick story, not at all surprising. Because it could have gone, at least for Trump, one of two ways. The first is, oh, I'll just let them talk and let them meet each other. And the second was... I don't want to talk to either of them, so I'm just going to <laughs> move myself from the entire situation. Either way, Dan Patrick, who seems like one of the most approachable people in sports and also one of the most knowledgeable people in sports, seems like you could talk to him about anything. To have this reaction 
says a lot, but we also need to understand the backstory and why Donald Trump is the way that he is.